So I was doing research with an undergraduate student who's doing a senior thesis with me. And in one of the research papers, this interesting sum showed up. And the question was, how big is this asymptotically? So it's the sum over all non-negative integers a, b, c, where a plus b plus c is n. And the quantity we're summing is n factorial over a factorial, b factorial, c factorial with the condition that a plus 2b is less than or equal to 2n over 3. Now this seems random, but what I want to do is take some time and look at abbreviated versions of this to get a sense of what's going on. So let's say we had only a and b involved, and not this inequality condition, and we were summing over all a plus b equal to n, n factorial over a factorial b factorial. Okay, so what we can do is take a, a is a non-negative integer, so it's going to go between 0 and n. We'll have n factorial over a factorial, and then b will be n minus a, so we'll have n minus a factorial. So if you look at this expression and have some familiarity with binomial coefficients, this is actually the sum a equals 0 to n of n choose a. And there's a way to determine what this sum is using what's called the binomial theorem. So the binomial theorem says if we attach a variable x to the a and then y to the n minus a to this expression, then it's actually the expansion of x plus y to the n as a binomial. And we'll see later why that's the case with the example that's more explicit. Um, so if you want to compute this actual sum that we have on the left side, we'd be setting x and y, our variables, to 1. And doing that on the right-hand side would give us an expression of 2 to the n. So this entire sum is exponential with n in the exponent and a base of 2. So that gives us a sense of maybe how big this entire sum that we started off with is going to be. But we need to extend to three variables. So let's look at doing the same thing where we sum a plus b plus c equal to n, n factorial over a factorial, b factorial, c factorial. So we're going to do the same thing that we did before, but use three variables now. We'll attach an x to the a, y to the b, z, z or z to the c. And it turns out if you look at this entire sum, this is going to be the expression x plus y plus z, all raised to the n. Now I want to actually show why that's the case. Um, so if we expanded the right, this expression, we would get n copies of the expression x plus y plus z. So if we wanted to know what the term x to the a, y to the b, z to the c looks like, what we're doing is in each of the n expressions x plus y plus z, we're ex selecting a of them to pick the x monomial out of, b of them we're picking y's, and c of them we're picking z's. Now there's n choose a ways to select x's. We have n factors and we're selecting a of them to be x's. Of the remaining ones, the remaining n minus a, we have b ways to select the y's. And of the remaining n minus a minus b, we have c ways to select the c's. So if you write these expressions out, we get n factorial over a factorial times n minus a factorial, and then n minus a factorial over b factorial times n minus a minus b factorial, and then an n minus a minus b factorial all over c factorial times n minus a minus b minus c factorial. Now since n is a plus b plus c, the quantity n minus a minus b minus c is actually zero. So that n minus a minus b factorial is actually zero factorial. And we have some other cancellation. So the zero factorial is a one. And what we're left with is precisely this expression n factorial over a factorial, b factorial, c factorial that we had in our expression um, on the left. So if you want to know asymptotically what this black sum is, that sum is actually 3 to the n by substituting in x equals y equals z equals 1. OK, so it's exponential. But what if we add in this condition that a plus 2b is less than or equal to 2n over 3 that came up in the research that I was working on? Is this still exponential? Or is it like 3 to the n times 1 over n? Is it a fraction of the? the number of um, things that we see, um, or is it actually exponentially smaller, or is this something like maybe 3 to the n over root n? It's sort of unclear asymptotically what's going on with this expression. Um, but we're going to see a really neat way to address this by augmenting the expression that we had um, earlier. So what we're going to do is multiply 
this by a variable, but the variable is going to be x raised to the a plus 2b. So that's the thing that we have our inequality um, involved with. And we're going to select an actual value of a to plug in here. The value of a is going to be between 0 and 1 strictly. Okay, so if we do that and augment the exponent a little bit, we'll be able to get an inequality that gives us a bound from above for the expression we have. So we're going to augment the exponent by subtracting 2n over 3. Now if we do that, then a plus 2b minus 2n over 3 is non-positive in our expression. So x, because it's between 0 and 1, raised to that exponent is strictly greater than 1. So if we let s be the sum we're interested in, s is going to be less than or equal to this expression when we put in the x variable raised to the a plus 2b minus 2n over 3 because when we raise it to the exponent, we get something greater than 1. Okay, so our entire expression that we have here is going to be less than or equal to summing over all a plus b plus c equal to n, n factorial over a factorial, b factorial, c factorial, x to the a, x to the 2b, that's x to the uh, a plus 2b, and we'll put in a 1 plus a 1 to the c for our third variable, and pull out the x to the negative 2n over 3, because it's independent of the expression that we're summing. So we get that our sum s is bounded above by x to the negative 2n over 3, and then we have a sum here that looks like our trinomial expansion. We have x to the a, x squared to the b, 1 to the c. And so that's going to be 1 plus x plus x squared all raised to the n. Okay, and this is true for any value of x that's between 0 and 1. So s is going to be less than or equal to the minimum of this expression over all values of x. Now we don't know the minimums actually achieved, so we technically need to put the word infimum, which is like a minimum but not knowing that the minimum is achieved. Um, of the expression x to the negative 2n over 3 times 1 plus x plus x squared all to the n. And so now we've kind of changed this upper bound to a calculus problem where we're trying to find a lower bound on this expression x to the negative 2n over 3 times the quantity 1 plus x plus x squared all raised to the n. So we're going to try to do that. We're going to try to use calculus to see if we can get some type of bound on this expression. And maybe that'll give us an idea of what our um, total upper bound is for this expression we're wondering about the asymptotics of. Now we can rewrite this expression as pulling in the x to the negative 2n over 3 into the, the trinomial. We get this as x to the negative 2 thirds plus x to the 1 third plus x to the 4 thirds all raised to the n. So I'm going to let this expression we're raising to the end be f of x, and let's look at calculus to see if we can get a bound on this. If we differentiate this function, we get negative 2 thirds x to the negative 5 thirds plus a third x to the negative 2 thirds plus 4 thirds x to the 1 third. All right, so we can maybe get critical points by setting the derivative to 0. We don't know if it's a min or max, but it's a good start. Um, we factor the one-third x to the negative five-thirds common factor, and we get a negative two plus x plus four x squared. So if we want f prime to be zero, we'd want the expression four x squared plus x minus two to be zero itself, um, which would give us by the quadratic formula that x is negative 1 plus or minus the square root of, it'll work out to 33, I think, all over 2a, which is 8. Now, we're trying to figure out values between 0 and 1, and of these two roots, the one value that's between 0 and 1 is negative 1 plus the square root of 33 over 8. So if you let that be c, and we plug it into f, it turns out, if you use like Wolfram Alpha or a calculator, that f evaluated at c is roughly 2.755. Okay, and so s is going to be less than or equal to that value because s is the smallest of all of the values of this expression over all values of x in the interval 0, 1. So our expression is actually less than or equal to 2.755 to the n. So it's exponentially smaller than 3 to the n, which is really hard to see at the beginning. And 
the way we did this was a really cool trick using um, a way to express things in terms of the trinomial theorem and then using calculus to get this upper bound. There's actually other ways to do this using tools from probability, but they all boil down to analyzing sort of this expression f of x to the n and being able to get bounds for it. 